Greetings and welcome everyone to Drift Moon. Drift Moon is an indie RPG developed by Instant Kingdom. Instant Kingdom is a studio located in Finland, which is kind of radical since, well, I haven't played many games from Finland and this is the first for me, so, I don't know. It's brand new adventures. It's a whole new world of Finland games for me to play and I, and I am ready to accept all of these games with open arms. So, come on over Finland. But uh, anyway, yes, Drift Moon is an indie RPG. It's, it plays a lot like... Diablo or Torchlight or Path of Exile. Now while it may not have the polish of say a Diablo 3, it certainly makes up for that lack of polish with its writing. And man, this writing is fantastic. As you can see in the background, there's this one character, Bobby, and he's just making these weird remarks about stuff and and they're pretty funny. They're, they're pretty funny. Um he's basically just like a ah, hermit crap, I shall cool the blotch, and it's just like these crazy little one liners which are which are very cute. And now, when we get started, we get to name our character. I'm going to call him Oh My, because why not? Uh, here's your difficulty level. It, uh, basically, the higher difficulty level, the more challenging the enemies are, and the lower skill points you get. So, it's basically more challenging, which is to be uh, expected. I'm going to be doing Champion, and just because that's, you know, pretty normal, since I'm not an MLG legit gamer, so I'll pick normal, because, you know, that's how it goes. Before we continue on with the video, I just want to mention something that I forgot to mention. Drift Moon is currently having a Steam Greenlight campaign. I'll leave a link to their Steam Greenlight page in the description below, so go click that, vote it up, and then come back here and watch the rest of the video. Okay, thanks. And this is our first story introduction bit. Oh my, my son, do you still remember Grandfather Marthen's strange gem? Things have gone terribly wrong with it. Please come see me as quickly as you can. I will tell you more when you arrive at the Northrop Inn. I cannot risk wait writing more in this letter. Stay safe. Your father, Winston. Rinse. After a long journey, you finally arrive at Northrop. Rinse, the hat maker, Northrop's very own part-time village reader, is standing by the old well, apparently waiting for you. Hi, oh my! Your mother couldn't come yet, so she told me to meet you here by the well. I sure hope she, she'll be here soon. There have been some really strange people here today. We do like having visitors here, but... Old Rin seems to remember you're here again, but no matter. It's awfully nice to see you back at the home village. Oh my, what brings you here now? <laughs> this is awesome, just having him say oh my. So goofy. Now, as you can tell by the graphical style, this obviously isn't trying to be photorealistic. It's going for a very stylized, slightly cartoony type look, and I like that. I like it, I like it a lot, since I'm, I'm not really a fan of the photo re re photorealistic games, and so... You know, it's 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 okay. It's not astounding by any means, but it's not terrible, and I kind of like it. Uh, father sent me a letter. He wanted to see me right away about some old jewel. Uh, it's good to see you, Rince. How are things in Northrop? Oh, Northrop is fine as always. Well, not so fine, actually. The old man scratches his head. Now that I think about it, it's been quite dreadful around here recently. Really? It's fine as always, and it's been dreadful. Okay, yeah, whatever. Uh, well, but he did say... He... Whatever. Whatever. Plotho had an unfortunate accident, but luckily your mother was able to heal him, and Sierra has gone missing. Her parents are worried sick. There's more, there's more, but maybe it's best we talk about that later. Your mother will come soon. Father sent me an old jewel. He wanted to see me right, right away about some old jewel. Father sent me a letter. He wanted to see me right away about some old jewel. Your father, eh? I wonder what Winston is up to now. He's been stuck up in his new alchemy lab for weeks. You know, I think I saw your brother Robert here just a few days ago. He must have been visiting your folks too. Listen, oh my, now that you're here, there's something I've been wanting to... Rinse's voice trails off as he sees your mother running towards you. Well, she's certainly in a hurry. We'll talk later. Meet me in the tavern tonight. And the conversation. Oh my! They're coming. You must hide, oh my. Right now. Please trust me. There's no time to explain. Hey, that's another indie game. If you'd kindly look to the left of the word mother, you'd see a character portrait. The character portrait basically is to show what the person looks like in a very high detailed fashion. Now, you're probably wondering, well, why is this so important? Well, I like it because rather than having them change your camera angle and forcing you right up into their face and being like, look at these facial textures, ain't they amazing? They just use a character portrait and use that instead of, well, you know, doing that whole, you know, zooming in on their face thing. So I like it. It's a nice little change and it, it, it helps it. It helps set the mood and all that. So yeah, that's pretty good. Suddenly, your mother runs towards you and pushes you into the into the well. What? I was just talking about character portraits, and now I'm going down a well. What the hell's going on here? Deep well. In your utter disbelief and shock, you have just enough time to panic about the water level of the well before your head hits rock bottom and goes black. Oh yeah, I get to panic before I go black, or get turned before my main 
head goes, you know what I mean. A long time passes and absolutely nothing happens in the well, but far above you a small silver feather starts falling down, endlessly tumbling and turning in the wind. It is very nearly blown of course, but it bravely hitches a ride on a passing jumbo bee. Finally it reaches its target and floats down the well onto your unconscious body, it tickles your nose and a violent sneeze wakes you up. As yesterday's events come back to you, your mind fills with questions. Why did your father want to meet you so urgently? Why did your mother suddenly push you down the well? How are you going to get out of here? Good questions, let's find out. Click the torch to pick it up. Okay, so this is basically the tutorial. Hello mum, anyone, I'm down here. This is your inventory, you can access it, access it by either clicking it or pressing tab. And now by clicking the torch, you equip it and bam, now you've got some light and you can see. You're like, oh look, the silver feather. Let's have a look at this. What does it say? A sparkling silver feather. It feels light, like a real feather, but is in fact made of some completely unbreakable metal. Carrying the feather increases your maximum mana by one point. Okay, that's cool. Now, this is your HUD. That you've basic here is it's pretty similar if you've played any other like type of game like this. Basically you've got all your little special things here, your main attacks, your weapons, you got your focus blow requires a melee weapon, and the one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven will all be your weapons which you can use. In the bottom left is your XP and your food. I think we'll learn about that in a little bit. Yeah, your XP is basically on how much experience you require until you level up, basic stuff. Here's your health and mana. The blue represents your mana. Red represents your health. If it reaches zero, you will die. And on the right side, I believe this is magic, but I'm not quite sure. I haven't gotten too far into the game, but I believe it is magic. Aha, there's a small button here. Ooh, a spider web. This is basically trying to instruct us on how to fight stuff, which is... Which is Good that they decided to make it so that it's not an actual enemy, because otherwise you could die and that would be very embarrassing. So they've made it imp um, an immobile spiderweb, which is basically a good thing to fight against. And now, we're, now they stepped it up. Because you've already established how to fight against something, you now get to fight against something that moves and can kill you. So that's good that they're slowly moving it up. And now we just ate four food, which I believe regenerates your health. I'm not quite sure. Use the ladder to go up. You got it. Let's get up here. Oh, there we go. I'm in the tavern. When you pick up food, it will go to your food counter, lower left corner. Okay, cool. So we can pick up all this food. They want us to pick up all the food. Let's check out the chest. What have you got in there? Money. Mine now. I don't care who owns it. It's mine. Thank you very much. Oh, hey, a nice little window. What? Why is the table in front of the window? That's That makes no sense architecturally. How are they supposed to use this th this table? That's, that's ridiculous. Okay. Oh, hey. Whoa, it's Rinse the Hat Makers. What, what's happened to you, Rinse? I'm in here, says this, says word. Let's open the door. It's locked. I need a key to open it. Okay, well, looks like this is basically just telling us to explore and how to loot and basically stuff like that. Oh, hey, a letter. Maze order number 234. Galpsy, that snatcher customer of yours has gone too far. He prowls around people's houses at nights and scares our children. I cannot allow it to continue. I know he tells great stories about famous pirate treasures and drinks from thimble-sized mugs, but I have to take action. I'm ordering Cormac to lock him up. I know you've banned Cormac from the tavern, but next time he comes, you have to let him in. Yours, Mayor Biscuit. Cool. Yes, because we need, because we require a key to unlock this door to progress, this is basically them trying to tell us how to how to explore, and that exploring gets you goodies and stuff like that. So look, you can get a torch, and we got like a little bit of lore from that thing. We learned about someone named Cormac and a thimble-sized mug pirate. I'm not sure. Let's look at the mirror. What a handsome face, indeed. Aha! Here's the tavern key. Now that we have the tavern key, we should be able to just easily open up the door, and bam! Whoa, you scared me. You were surprised to see Word, your father's apprentice. Oh my, thank the maker you're here. I assume the maker is their version of God. It's a nightmare. We have to do something. Word, look at these statues. These statues look like people. Please tell me they're just some creepy statues your father ordered from extreme an extremely skilled sculptor. Oh, that's a lot of choices. The young man shakes with terror. He was terrible. A zillion lizard warriors attacked Northrop. Hogpoth came behind my window and told me that everyone had somehow turned to stone. And then there was a bright flash. He turned to stone too. And your father. The lizards took him. There was nothing I could do. You must believe me. Alright, so now we have five dialogue choices, which is quite good. This game has a lot of dialogue in it, which would normally be bad in a, in a lesser game. But because this game has such really good writing, I'm fine with it. Like, please, give me all your dialogue. But I assume, since this game is 10 to 25 hours... The further we progress into the game, the less dialogue that will be given and the more like side quests and stuff like that. The more into its indie um, point-and-click adventure RPG things 
route it will get uh, like embrace. Wait, why did I say point and click adventure? This isn't a point and click adventure at all. I mean, I suppose it kind of is, but no, it's a it's a hack and slash Diablo RPG. Uh, sorry, I'm brain dead. What? Why did they kidnap my father? Do you know where he was taken? I don't know where. I don't know why they took him and left the rest of us here. Your father seemed anxious about something, but he didn't tell me much about his research. As usual, he wouldn't even tell his own apprentice what's going on. He was in his lab day and night, and he even told me to take a holiday. Would you believe it? Please, oh my, we must find a way to help the villagers. They, they have turned my dad into stone too. Who locked you in here? He blushes slightly. My father grounded me for the night because I wanted to meet a girl. Suddenly, tears up, wet, tears well up in his eyes. But now she's probably turned to stone too. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, 